<laughs> Good morning. I had the best seat in the house to be behind you and watch all that. I feel like I need to rest, just breathe. <laughs> So wonderful. Welcome to worship today. My name is Missy Jensen, and I am one of the pastors here that will be leading us in worship today, along with Pastor Steven Sanders. And Ryan Jensen is on Facebook with those who are worshiping with us online. So to all of you, welcome into God's house today. We have a beautiful worship service we are celebrating scouting today, and so we've got Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts leading us in different parts of our worship. Hopefully you were welcomed by them on your way into the sanctuary today, and it is just good to have their presence with us today. We do want to encourage you to take a moment to register your attendance. For those of you here in the sanctuary, you'll find a little white card in your bulletin and you can fill that out. There's also a spot there to let us know of any prayer concerns you have or joys that you would like to share with the church um, or just with the pastors and you can place those cards in the offering plates in the back. And for those of you who are worshiping online, we ask that you would just uh, type in a comment to let us know that you are here. If you have any prayer concerns, you can share those as well in the comments. But we are glad that you are with us today. Now this morning, our Girl Scouts are going to lead us in our call to worship. So I invite you girls to come forward now. Hi, everyone. My name's Grace. I'm Matilda. And I'm Ella. Please stand for the call to worship. Friends, we serve a God who designed us for community. Come, let us worship together. We serve a God who doesn't ask us to go alone. Come, let us sing together. We're loved by a God who chooses to be with us. Come, let us walk together. This morning we are having some technical difficulties with the screen, so I want to go ahead and invite you to turn in your hymnals to page 62, and we'll be singing All Creatures of Our God and King, and we'll be singing verses 1, 4, and 5. Again, that's page 62 in your hymnals. Creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with the sea.
prayer this morning. Holy and loving God, we are grateful for the opportunity we have together with fellow believers to come and share in one another's joys and one another's sorrows. So God, we take a moment to lift to you our prayer concerns that are on our hearts. Oh God, we name them aloud or we name them on our hearts. Oh God, you have given us this community so that we don't have to do life alone. Help us to remember that you have called us to be together, that we can accomplish far greater things when we work with one another than when we try to go and do our own thing. Oh God, we pray for the church we pray for our witness in the world. May it be a true reflection of your love for all people. Oh God, today we celebrate the scouts among us and for their leadership within the community. For giving them opportunity to grow and strengthen their own voices and their own skills so that they can be a blessing to us. Oh God, be with us as we continue to worship you this morning. Help us to sense your presence with us and among us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite our girls to come back and they're going to lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Hello, I am Evan Fuseli, and will you please stand to join me in the affirmations of faith? We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the world made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus and crucify the risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated.
goodness, kids, that is why we tell you to practice. <laughs> Woo, that was awesome. Well, children, it is children's time. So come on forward, and our Girl Scouts will be teaching our lesson this morning. So gather in your normal spot down here on the floor. Whoa, this box sure is heavy. Grace, can you come help me with this? Sure, you're right, this is heavy. Maddie, can you help us? Of course. <laughs> Thanks. Yay, we did it. Where did you want this again? Oh, it's right here. Okay. <laughs> hey guys, today we're going to be learning about how we is more powerful than me. Um, that's why it took all three of us than just Ella to lift that box. In the Bible, Acts 2, 43 through 47 tell us that the disciples came together with other followers of Christ, and they worked together to help each other. And because they worked together, they were stronger. Being a Girl Scout is like being a disciple because we work together to help each other and others just as Jesus showed us. Can you think of an example of how you've helped somebody or somebody's help, 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 somebody else has helped you, like a sibling or a friend? Um, my dad and my neighbors have helped me with my fish tank. Stand up for them. I help my brother clean the fish tank and feed the animals. Okay. Um, we remember to help others by reciting the Girl Scout promise. Okay, so we're going to do that now. On, raise, so we raise three fingers in the agreement. So we're just going to show you guys it. On my honor, I will try to serve God in my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. Now repeat after me as we bow our heads and pray. Dear God, Dear God please, help us please help us to help others, to help others at, all time. at all times. Amen. Thank you all for coming up to, uh, for children's time. Now I invite you to go back and sit with your grown-ups, okay? I did you all did a very good job. So in case you haven't figured out, we're celebrating Scout Ministries today. And Sam and Evan are going to share with us a little bit about what scouting does and about what it means to them. You ready, guys? Yep. And we think there are going to be images on the screen but if they don't pop up, technical issues. I think we're good. Hi, I'm Evan Huslig. I'm a second class scout and I am the patrol leader of the Rebels Patrol. I'm Sam Munger. I'm a, seven, a second class scout and I'm the grub master or the quartermaster of Troop 505. Um, next slide, please. Just keep going and they'll catch up okay. with you. Um, one of the things we love about our meetings is we like coming out here to the church grounds to learn scout skills and recruit new scouts. Some of the things we do are learning how to build fire on water, learning how to carry people, and make survival shelters. Um, today's my video to go to summer camp. We do fundraisers including making pan a pancake breakfast, which was here right in the kitchen over there, and selling mulch. We decided to try to make a breakfast for dinner as a fundraiser for camp money. One of the things I enjoyed was learning to use the industrial griddle. I liked it when we used the, the industrial griddle to scramble eggs in an instant. Every month, once per week, every once 
One weekend every month, we go camping at a state park somewhere in Texas. One of the recent ones was at Colorado Bend State Park. One of, some of the things we did there were mountain biking and kayaking. We went on a five mile hike and ended with talking by the campfire. Another one we went on is Purden Alice Falls State Park. It was one of our best campouts and we went wading in the river and we recruited new scouts. One of my favorite, favorite things was building survivor, survival shelters and sleeping in them overnight. My favorite thing of Purden Alice was wading in the river and skipping stones across it. Summer camps. Um, last summer, our scout troop went to Camp Hood in Mississippi, which is known as one of the top Boy Scout camps in the U.S., and for very good reasons. At Camp Hood, there are vast woods and beautiful water sides in the camp. <laughs> but the camp wasn't the only fun part about the trip. We all enjoyed taking the road trip in the, in the troop, uh, troop van. Yeah, the troop van, and getting to know the other scouts. One of the activities at the camp was this thing called Cope Course, which is a gigantic structure with lots of things that'll help you cope with your fears. We also learned how to professionally perform a flag ceremony. Um, um, yeah. High adventure camps. Um, one of these high adventure camps is Sea Base in, in Key West, Florida. One of what you do at that camp is you go out and live on a boat in the middle of the ocean for a week. For preparation, we had to go to sea base. We had to learn how to swim better and even spend a few weekends getting scuba, scuba certified. At sea base, we saw, uh, saw lots of diverse fish, even sharks, and we learned how to cook on a boat and live there for a week. This summer, two crews, two uh, crews out of Troop 505 are going to another uh, high adventure base called Philmont. Um, this is one of the most challenging high adventure bases in the world. Um, at Philmont, we will participate in a 12 day hike. Per day, we will have to travel almost a thousand feet of elevation and go almost seven miles. Per preparation, we have to go on a hike every single weekend at 7 a.m. at the latest. We go with upwards of 30 pounds in our pack and go hiking all around central Texas. Philmont is cool because you hike in the morning and do all kinds of activities in the afternoon. These activities range from black powder rifles to blacksmithing to burrow packing. Thank you, the members of Oak Hill United Methodist Church, for supporting our scouting careers. I've got to figure out how to take this thing off. Guys, that was wonderful. Thank you. Scouting is one of the ministries of this church. Oak Hill doesn't just provide space for scouting. It's a ministry of this congregation, and I hope you can see some of the young men and the young women that are being nurtured and cultivated and, and guided to grow into the young men and women that God has created them to be. So as part of the ministry of this church, we not only want you to, to come and do scouting here, but we want you to be connected and to grow into the young men and women that God has created you to be. So here's what I invite you to do. I invite everyone who is involved with scouting. If you were a Girl Scout, Boy Scout, Brownie, Cub Scout, if you would stand, please. And I want all the grown-ups who are involved with scouting, if you would stand, please. Okay, we got 90% of the congregation growing to go, standing up today, so that's cool. Would you extend a hand? Stand up! You don't get to sit down yet. <laughs> Would you extend a hand out toward the young men and women? Let's pray over them. Almighty God, we pray that you bless these young people who have committed themselves to scouting. Give them hearts of love hope for the future, and open and receptive minds that they might grow in knowledge and wisdom through you and through scouting. Strengthen them in mind and body as they serve you and your people. May they be inspired to become your disciples in the world. 
bless their lives, their efforts, and their leaders, that they may come to know and to serve and to love you now and forever. Upon your children we ask this blessing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Would you congratulate these young men and women for what they're doing today and for their work in scouting. Now you can, now you can be seated. And you're going to read scripture here in just a moment. Come on up, David. Um, but before they do, I, again, I, what we do at Oak Hill is important, guys. Whether it is our, our youth ministry that this morning was packing, how many flood buckets did y'all pack this morning? 50. Our, our teenagers loaded up 50 flood buckets this morning. Or our, 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 our Sunday school ministry where people have been connected during this crazy time. Scouting, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts are part of the life of this church. And a lot of organizations aren't supporting Scouts now just because of some of the legal issues that have been going on. And so we're opening our arms and our doors to any scouting group that needs a place, that needs an organization to charter them, to welcome them, because it's a ministry that touches kids' lives. And I want to let you know that even if you are not part of scouting, you are supporting these young men and women. Through your generosity, through your generosity of, of offering your gifts to God, you are supporting the ministry that is touching these kids' lives. Whether you give online or, or through texting or the old-fashioned way of dropping a cash or checks and offering plates that we have at the back of the sanctuary, I want to let you know that your generosity matters. It provides a place. It provides resources for these young men and women. And together, God is going to work through us and with us to touch people's lives. Thank you for your generosity and your support of these young men and women. Now, David, I invite you to read our scripture passage this morning. Good morning. Would you please join me in prayer? God, we gather as a people who want community, community more than comp company and who would rather be known by each other than to look like we have our lives together. Lead us as we grow closer together by worshiping you. Teach us that life together is better than isolation. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading from today is Acts 2, 43 to 47, the fellowship of the believers. They, devo they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, sir. We all pray with me. Gracious and eternal God, we pray that you open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit. Take our hands and use them, take our lips and move them, and take our hearts and set them afire with your unending love. Through Christ's most holy name we pray. And all God's people say, Last week, I drove our older son to Washington, D.C. Our older son graduated college at, in, in, during COVID and moved to Austin with my wife and me when we moved to Austin. Thank goodness he found a job and he has been working from our rental house here in Austin for a company in California. And it being COVID and all, his, his, his company has decided that they are never ever going to bring people into the office so he can live anywhere that he wants as long as it has internet connection. Can I hear a collective? Aww. 
So he chose to move to Washington, D.C. I don't know why he didn't want to live with his mom and dad at 24 anymore, but for some reason he didn't. So he rented a trailer, we hooked it up to the back of my pickup truck, and we loaded down his trailer, and we took off from Austin Friday a week ago. Did you know that it's a long way from Austin to Washington, D.C.? <laughs> 1,500 blooming miles. We drove across the country, but it really wasn't all that bad. We listened to audiobooks and had long conversations with one another and listened to music. We got into D.C. three days later and we spent a couple of nights with my sister who just moved there. And then we got up and we drove to his apartment, unloaded all of his worldly possessions into his brand new apartment, and then we went and dropped off the U-Haul trailer. I drove him back to his apartment, gave him a great big goodbye hug, and then I started heading back from D.C. to Austin. Did you know that it's a longer way from D.C. back to Austin? <laughs> it is, man. It was a long drive. At first, it wasn't too bad. I finished an audiobook that we had been listening to together. It was okay. And then that storm that brought snow through Austin, well, it dumped snow in Arkansas and Tennessee, so, so, so I had to turn south at Knoxville and drive through Alabama and Mississippi where I got pounded with torrential rainstorms. Rain it was a long drive. <laughs> it was a long drive, and I didn't have anyone I could trade off with anymore. You know, at least he drove a quarter of the drive to D.C., but man, it was tough. At one point, I pulled over into a rest area because I just needed to sleep. I pulled over and I set my phone for half an hour and I slept for about an hour in a rest area. And then I got up and I continued. That drive was a long slog when I was all by myself, when I was alone. You know... We all need alone time, right? We, but we, we, we all need time when we can be alone. I, I think that, that being alone and, and having time when we're on our own is important for our lives and for our spiritual lives. It's important to have what you might call solitude. A, a writer by the name of Henry Nouwen writes this. He writes that without solitude, it is virtually impossible to have a spiritual life. We all need time when we're alone. But there is a difference between being alone and being alone. Have you ever known when someone's alone? Maybe you have seen her. The new girl at a new school sits at a lunch table all by herself, eating her pimento cheese sandwich all alone. Or maybe you've had a friend who signed the divorce papers and goes back to the house. This is what he wanted, but goes back into the house and is all alone. It is no fun being alone. At, at the beginning of the book of Acts, if that's, that's the scripture that David just read from the book of Acts. At the beginning of the book of Acts, the disciples find themselves alone. Now, after Jesus' death and resurrection, there were about how many disciples? Right, about 120. And, and after Jesus' resurrection, Jesus, Jesus walked and he talked with his disciples for some 40 days, and, and he shared with them things that he wanted them to know. And then, and then, one day, Jesus walks with his disciples up to a hill, gave final instructions, and according to the Bible, he ascended into heaven in a cloud. And all of a sudden, those disciples were alone. Now, they had each other, but they went back to a house, and, and they, they, they did some things. They prayed with one another, and they ate with one another. But they were on their own. They weren't just having solitude. It felt to the world like they were alone. Have, have you ever known someone who's felt alone? Then in the second chapter of Acts, which is 
the, from where David read our scripture passage this morning. In the second chapter of Acts, something happens. On Pentecost Sunday, on Pentecost Sunday, God sends the Holy Spirit upon the church. The Holy Spirit is the way Christians talk about the very presence of God among us. The Holy Spirit came upon the church, and my friends, the Holy Spirit set the church on fire. It set the church on fire, and those first disciples, they began to share the good news of God's love and grace in Jesus Christ. And according to the sentence before what David read to us this morning, 3,000 people were baptized and joined the church in one day. Huh, that looked pretty good on the church's records, wouldn't it? But here's what I want you to notice. Here's what I want you to notice. It, it comes from what David read to us this morning. I want you to listen for how the disciples live together. All right? Listen to this. I got to find it first. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, so study, and to the breaking of bread, holy communion, and to prayer. They did what we would call religious things. But they also did something else. Listen to what they did. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Did you hear what they were, the early church was doing? They were sharing they were sharing what they had with one another. Now, they did religious stuff. They did religious stuff. It says here that they went to the temple. I guess they prayed when they went to the temple, but then listen to what they did. They went back home, and they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts. Do you hear how the early church was living with one another? The early church, those, those first Christians, they were sharing generously with what they, from what they had. And if they didn't have enough, some people would sell some stuff so that they would have enough. And then they would care for one another, gathering in their homes and, and sharing in dinners with one another and sitting and visiting and laughing around the table. According to the Bible, according to the Bible, when those first Christians came together, they shared and they cared for one another. Now, I think, my friends, I think this scripture passage actually tells us something about God and something about how God wants us to live together as people of faith. You see, when God sent the Holy Spirit upon the early church, and, and all of these thousands of people came to know and accept God's love in Christ for themselves. God did not have those first Christians live together as a bunch of individual me's. God brought them together into a community called the church. A community of we. Into a community where we love and we care for one another. A community where we look out for one another and share with one another around the table. Now, there's some scholars, there's some scholars who, who question whether or not the church actually ever lived like this. Because quite frankly, it's a very idealized vision of the church, isn't it? But I think that the writer of the book of Acts, the same person who wrote the Gospel of Luke, I think the writer of the book of Acts included this part of the story because he wanted to give us an image of what the church looks like when we're living at our best. Not a bunch of isolated individual me's who happen to believe in God and Jesus, but into something greater, a we. A we where we live together as a community of faith. A we where we live together as people who love and care for one another and look out for one another. Now, have you ever been part of a church? Have you ever been part of a community 
where folks have done that, where folks have really looked out for one another and loved and cared for each other. I started trying to think of times when I've experienced that in my life. And since I thought there would be maybe three or four scouts here today, thank you for, for being here today, by the way. I, I thought about times in scouting when I had been connected with a community that really loved and cared for one another. And, and, and so I thought about some times. And in, in, in the church where I came from, we, we sponsored, that church sponsored lots of different scouting groups. And, and our sons were, were part of Boy Scouts. They both eagled. I didn't eagle because my dad became scoutmaster and I quit when he did that. But both of our sons got their eagle. But our sons went to Philmont. Anybody here ever, here ever been to Philmont? Philmont is, is the premier Boy Scout high adventure camp. It is an awesome thing. And our sons, I got to go with them on a 12-day backpacking adventure, a 12-day trek. So we loaded everything that we needed into our packs and put our packs on our backs, and we set off hiking through the, the mountains of, of Philmont, New Mexico. I don't know what an equivalent might be for Girl Scouts, but, but that's, the, that's like the premier Boy Scout high adventure camp. And, and it was great. We, we usually hike during the day, and then in the afternoon, I heard some of the things you talked about, black powder guns or shotguns or, or, or rock climbing, and just did some, some really cool things. And the first eight or nine days were excellent. The weather was perfect. It was wonderful. And then on about day nine or ten, as we were hiking toward the camp where our kids, where the kids were going to get to, the scouts were going to get to ride horses, it started to rain. And for those of you who don't know what you do when you're backpacking and it rains, you put on your raincoat. And you put a, put a cover over your pack and you keep on hiking. And so we kept on hiking and then it began to pour. I mean, just buckets of rain coming down. It was pouring like crazy. And then it began to lightning. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with, with um, about sound, you can tell how far away lightning is by counting the number of seconds between a bolt of lightning and a clap of thunder. At first, the lightning, it was, it was a good long way off. And then it got within a mile of us, and it was pouring down rain. And according to the safety protocols, because everything in scouting has to be about safety first, according to the safety protocols, we had to find shelter. Well, there was no shelter. We were out in the middle of the blooming wilderness. So what we were instructed to do, and this is where the, the dads on the trip had to take over, because it became a matter of life and death, is we had to go into lightning position. Now, for those of you who have not been trained in Red Cross lightning position, let me, let me explain to you what this is like. First of all, you put your hands over your head, and then you squat down, and then you keep your hands over your head and touch your elbows to your knees, and you stand on your tiptoes. And the theory behind it is that if a lightning hits you, it's going to hit your fingers, it's going to miss all of your vital organs, and go out through your tiptoes so that you don't die. It's a really good safety precaution. And so we got down into lightning pose, and we were down there, and man, it was pouring down rain. It was pouring down rain. And one of the scouts, don't ever say something like this, one of the scouts, he was down, we were down in lightning position, and he shouted at the heavens and said, is that all you got? <laughs> at which time it immediately began to hail. <laughs> we were down on the ground, hail was hail and rain, they were pummeling us. There is nothing like having frozen hands pummeled with pieces of ice. <laughs> and the dad and I, we looked at one another and we said, this is bad. <laughs> because lightning was no longer the issue. It was hypothermia. And one of our knucklehead kids had left his raincoat covering his backpack instead of putting it on him. So we decided we needed to get these kids to safety. I mean, Philmont is scout-led until something dangerous happens. 
And we knew that the horse camp and some log cabins were about a mile and a half away. So the other dad, he left his pack and he started running toward the horse camp and the cabins to tell the people running that camp, the counselors, that he had a bunch of cold, wet scouts who needed to get in. And I came along with our crew of seven boys. And we walked as fast as we could, helping the ones who were having a hard time. And we came up to a cabin out in the middle of the wilderness. And when we came up to that cabin, a counselor was standing out on the porch. And he said, drop your packs, take off your boots, and get inside. And when we went inside, there was a roaring fire in the fireplace. And he told the scouts to take off their wet clothes. And then the counselors brought out the blankets from their beds. And they wrapped them around the scouts. And they brought out cup after cup of hot chocolate and bowls full of candy, hard candy, just to get some calories into the boys. And the boys, they stood around the fireplace, warming themselves up. And as soon as they stopped shivering, they went out on the porch to make room because there were streams of more scouts coming inside. Do you know what I saw on that lo- in that log cabin in Philmont, New-, Philmont, New Mexico? Do you know what I saw in that cabin? There's a word to describe what I saw in that cabin. And that word is church. Not a building, but a people. A people who are sharing their resources and loving and caring for one another. What I saw in that building was the church at its best. Not a bunch of individual me's, but a we. A community of people who looked out for one another. People saw what was going on in that cabin and they streamed inside because they knew there was a safe, welcoming place. What I saw in that cabin is exactly what happened in the early church, as people loved and cared for one another, and people streamed into that community called the church. My friends, you're still just getting to know me as a pastor here, but I have to let you know what I've seen in Austin as I've moved to this city. What I have seen, it's a, it's a weird city, <laughs> but I have seen that there are a lot of people in our immediate community who are alone. People have moved into this community and they're, they're not feeling like they're connected anywhere. During COVID, a lot of people have become isolated. And there are many, many people who I have met that are busy and around people all day long. But they don't have places where they really feel like they belong. I believe, I believe that God calls the church and this community, this church called Oak Hill to live as a we. To live as a we where there are a lot of individual me's. And for this church to live as something greater than a bunch of individual people who come together just because we're nice folks. You see, I believe that God has given this church called Oak Hill a job. Now part of our job, part of our job involves doing religious stuff. All right? doing the stuff that that religious people do, coming together to worship and sharing in Holy Communion, communion, learning to pray and studying this book called the Bible. But another part of our job, another part of our job is to live as a community that shares from the abundance that God has entrusted into our lives. 
and to genuinely care for one another. You see, my friends, we live in a world where a lot of folks, they feel like they're going through life alone. And God calls the church and this church to live as something different, to share from our resources generously, to welcome the stranger with open arms, to care for one another when life is hurting, to gather around the table and visit and get to know people so that folks can form connections in their lives. And then when life gets hard, and it sometimes will, to live as a community that wraps people in a blanket of love so that they might know that they are never, ever, ever alone. That, that is the job that God has given this church. I want to live as that type of church. But I'm the preacher, and you expect preachers to say something like this. So my question to you is this. Do you want to live together as the church God calls us to be? Do you? That was wimpy. <laughs> Do you? Yes. Will you pray with me? O oh, holy and gracious God, you have created us for life with you. And you have created us for life with one another. We pray, O oh God, that you might strengthen us deep within our own hearts and souls. That we might live together as the people you have created us to be. To nurture the next generation. To love and care for one another. And to be an agent of goodness and love in this world. We lift our prayers through Christ's most holy name. And all God's people say, Amen. My friends, here's my invitation to you this week. First of all, I make an invitation for you for wherever you are in your own spiritual journey. If you're at a place in your own journey where you are ready to affirm or reaffirm your own relationship with God and Christ, I invite you to do that. If you're ready to, to just accept and claim God's love for you, I invite you to do that as we, as we sing our final song. Spend a little bit of time in prayer doing that. And if you're ready to make Oak Hill your church home, I invite you to come and see Pastor Missy or me as we sing our final song or meet us out in the courtyard area. If you're online, if you would just chat with Pastor Ryan and he can help you make Oak Hill your church home. But I invite you this week, I invite you this week to live as part of a we, to, to find ways that you can help people feel welcome and loved. Welcome and loved within your family, within your work environment, within your scout troop, within this community called the church. Look and find ways that are right in front of you to help people know that they don't have to go through life alone. Now I invite you to stand with me as you are able, and even if you don't like the sound of your own voice, will you join with our musicians and lift your voice to God as we sing together, go make of all disciples. I think the screens are going to be on the, words are going to be on the screen, and if not, pull out your hymnal to number 570. Oh, hot diggity dog, we got words. Let's lift our voices to God.
You may be seated. So we prepare to leave our time of worship today. We have several opportunities where you can gather as a we instead of just being a me. So we invite you to join our youth group today. They are having a Super Bowl party at 515 and they'll be playing games and having a good time as they might watch the game. It'll be on the background at least, uh, <laughs> but it'll be a good time for food and fun. And so join them this afternoon at 515. The next weekend, we have our women's retreat Friday through Sunday out in Blanco. And we would love for any women in the church to join us for that. You can choose whether you come for one day, for two days, or the whole weekend. Um, but you are invited to join us. It's not too late to sign up. You can do so right out in the lobby this morning. And then we have our Wonderfully Made seminar coming up for our older children. Um, they will be learning about the gift of their bodies and the gift of their sexuality and getting a church-based uh, lesson about that. And so if you want your child to participate in that, you can talk to Jennifer Barkas, our director of children's ministry, and she would love to have your family be a part of that. And then we want to continue to support our scouts. Our Boy Scouts are selling mulch. Uh, for your spring gardens. So if you want to um, get on their list for that, see them after church today. Unfortunately, the girls are out of cookies. Aww. Oh, I know. We missed it. So buy mulch. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, boys. Mulch cookies. All right. <laughs> but we'll support them anyway. And our district superintendent, Laura Merrill, is here in worship with us today, and she wants to bring a word to you. Thank you so much. Good morning, church. I'm uh, Laura Merrill. I know some of you, but not all of you. I know that uh, my uh, predecessor, Teresa Wellborn, and her dear, beloved family, Paul and Claire, were part of this congregation. Uh, and I now live in the house where they lived, around the corner, so uh, I'm, I'm glad to be with you this morning. Just want to uh, bring a greeting from Bishop Robert Schnazy to you this day. Uh, we're still kind of in a newish year. And, uh, and to say that uh, I want to express my own, and on his behalf, but also my own appreciation for the work of your pastoral team in particular. We have, a, a, at least I call him the dream team, I don't know if y'all would agree, but I, I want to express some appreciation for them this morning uh, in front of you and hope you could do that with me as well. Uh, let's give them a hand. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm very grateful for, for their presence here and for the, the, the faithful leadership of many of you as well. And I look forward as, as uh, my time expands here to, to getting to know some of you. Um, the work that you're doing, ex uh, certainly as expressed in the scouting uh, today, brother on the piano, seriously, oh my Lord. Like all, all of y'all, uh, th this is exactly what your pastor has said. I'm not gonna re-preach his sermon, but, but the radical act of being the kind of place that you're being, I, I hope you don't underestimate the impact of, of living into that call. This world needs you more now than ever before. So thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for allowing God to get a hold of your heart and, and to get a hold of your life. And so uh, blessings, I'm here for you in any way that I can serve you, uh, but mostly just wanted to greet you and especially on behalf of our bishop and just to thank you for who you are and for what you do. Amen. Thank you, Laura. Would you stand now to receive our benediction? As the early church, they gathered together and met in the temple. And then they went out into their homes and they gathered together and ate together. They broke bread with one another and became love for one another. So let us go and do the same. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, 
Amen.